Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over the Atlantic once again to the United States and the state of California and as you might be able to tell by the shape of the bottle that I've got here we're going to visit one of the kind of pioneering American craft breweries. So of course I'm talking about the Anchor Brewing Company from San Francisco in Northern California and today we're going to have a taste of the Anchor Saison which is their spring beer so it should be a very nice one actually and I've reviewed a number of Anchor beers for you before and if you're just getting into craft beer Anchor is actually a very good place to start. I particularly like the uh, the Breckles Brownie, that's a really nice one and the steam beer of course is quite iconic as well. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the company. It will only take a minute or two but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward. The brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've done from these guys before and I'm sure I will add to that in the near future because they do have a fairly big investment inventory of different beers that we can have a look at. But anyway, the Anchor Brewing Company was founded by German brewer Gottlieb Brekel in the year 1849 and the first bar was at a billiard saloon in Pacific Street in San Francisco and of course this was when the gold rush was going on in America. But the brewery became known officially as Anchor Brewery in the year 1896 when it was bought by fellow Germans Ernst Barrett and Otto Schinkel. Nobody actually knows exactly why it was called the Anchor Brewery but they do reckon that it was attributed to the fact that San Francisco was a thriving port at the time. But like many breweries that have a kind of longer history, the brewery did have its fair share of bad luck and this began in 1906 with the sudden death of Ernst Barrett and then the brewery was actually consumed by a fire which was caused by the great earthquake during that year too. But just after relocating to their new premises in 1907, Otto Schenkel was hit by a streetcar. Fortunately though, despite all this bad luck, the brewery was maintained by fellow German brewers Josef Krauss and August Meyer and they teamed up with liquor store owner Henry Tietjen to save the Anchor Brewery. But Anchor was effectively shut down in 1920 with the introduction of Prohibition and there's little or no record of the Anchor Brewery doing anything either legal or illegal during this period, although the brewery website does admit that there may have been a few, a few activities during this period of Prohibition. Thankfully though this ended in 1933 and Josef Krauss could once again began, begin brewing the famous steam beer after a hiatus of 13 years. But the brewery then had another stroke of bad luck in 1933 when it caught fire once again and Josef Krauss reopened the brewery at an old brick building with a new partner at a location that's just a few streets away from their current one in Mariposa Street. But Josef Krauss and Joe Allen managed to keep the Anchor Brewery afloat until Krauss's death in 1952. But by late 1959, the demand for mass-produced beers resulted in declining sales for Anchor and Joe actually shut the brewery down. But they reopened briefly in 1960 when Allen was joined by Lauren Streza but the problems with mass produced beer continued. But Fritz Maytag actually heard of the problems with the Anchor Brewery and he bought a 51% share of the brewery in 1965 effectively saving it from bankruptcy. But a few years later after some steady growth in 1971 Fritz bottled the Anchor Steam Beer for the very first time and since that time the brewery began to grow very steadily and they moved to their current location at the, at the old coffee roasting facility in Mariposa Street. And ever since that and ever since Fritz Maytag took over the brewery, Anchor Brewery kind of steadily established themselves as one of America's kind of prime brewing companies. But in 2010, after 45 years at the helm, Fritz Maytag announced his retirement and he sold the brewery to Keith Greger and Tony Folio, who agreed to preserve and expand the brewery's iconic operations. So it's really quite cool that I can review one of these kind of iconic American breweries for you in here. But ever since then, they've been expanding their portfolio. And just to list a few of the other beers you can get from these guys. There's the Anchor Small, the Liberty Ale, the Anchor Porter, Old Foghorn which is meant to be a beautiful barley wine ale. Uh, there is also Breckles Brown Ale which is one of my favourites actually, California Lager, Humming Ale, Bock Beer, Big Leaf Maple which is a really really interesting beer actually which is one of their seasonals and they've got Our Barrel Ale as well and they do have a number of different Christmas ales. I think they release that as a different edition every year so it's always different so if you do come across that one do pick it up. But anyway let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. This guy as I told you is the spring seasonal beer from the Anchor Brewery. It comes in at 7.2% 
percent and I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork there on this one I'll just bring up the camera and let you see that you can see it's got some nice lemons on the the label there but this is the kind of typical way that anchor set up all their beers with the the labeling and stuff so you can see this is the typical anchor brewing company bottle cap on this one it tells you a little bit on the uh, on the top here this little top label so I'll just read that to you it says saisons originated with the rustic farmhouse ales of Wallonia a mostly French speaking region of Belgium uh, beer de saison was brewed during the saison froid which is the cold season uh, for consumption during the warmer months today saisons are made and enjoyed year round as brewers were we were drawn to this beer's this beer style's enigmatic history the freedom it offers and the creativity it demands anchor saison spring ale is a traditional belgian style saison with a california twist the distinctive the distinctiveness of roasted belgian wheat malt is enhanced by the peppery cloves clove like flavors of a locally cultured saison style yeast and for this release we choose three california ingredients lemongrass lemon peel and and ginger whose synergy adds a tangy crispness and herbal spiciness to this sharply refreshing uniquely Californian Saison so sounds a very nice beer and I guess that would explain why the lemons are on top of that beer and the lemongrass you can see there just on the side that is the kind of symbol of the Anchor Brewing Company as you might have guessed it is an anchor but anyway without further ado let's get stuck into this beer so it's a 7.2% Saison the actual specs of this one the malt base contains two row barley malt red wheat malt and Belgian toasted wheat and it's hopped with Chinook and Nelson Sauvignon and it was first introduced actually in 2014 and it's available available yearly during March to May so you can get your hands on this one in the spring it's actually just gone out of season in fact I'm reviewing this beer for you on the 27th of June but you will see it on the channel a bit later than that so as you can see a nice little smoky opening there and we'll get this guy out and into the glass you can smell the kind of nice wheaty aromas coming off this one as it's poured out here and it's pouring with a very very nice head actually so let's bring this camera up and let you have a little look at the color here I'll just move the light over so you can see it so as you can see then the beers poured a very nice Kind of bright orangey golden amber if i put my fingers behind it you can see it's not really transparent it is quite hazy and there's a frothy kind of white head on this one it's maybe a bit more creamy colored than white a little off-white actually but it looks a very nice beer there is a little bit of sediment visible in this one but it's kind of it's just a very very small amount and there's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but a lot of little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there but overall it looks a very very nice beer so anyway, let's get stuck into the aroma of this one. It's actually a bit more hoppy than you would expect from a Saison beer. Normally when you think about a Belgian Saison, you get a huge waft of uh, that kind of typical Belgian sweet yeast, a little bit of wheat and things like that. But this guy, actually the most prominent component of the aroma, I think, is more of the grassy hop. But if you sugar it up a little bit more, you do get what you expect from the kind of Belgian yeast character in this one but it smells very very nice so underneath when you sugar it up a little bit you've got a nice sweet kind of doughy bread it's not quite as sweet as some of the yeasty characters you'll get from the Belgian beer but there is a bit of wheat and a kind of peppery spice as they described on the bottle there but you can get the kind of citrusy hops in there and I think there's a good bit of grassiness to it too and there might even be kind of a little bit of I want to say there's a little bit of gooseberry in here the grassy character in it is actually quite unusual but the Nelson Sauvignon, I should point out, I, I say it's gooseberry because I know Nelson Sauvignon can actually have that um, that kind of aroma about it. But it smells like a very, very nice beer. So you've got all the typical elements you would expect of a Saison, but the hop is a little bit more prominent. So perhaps a little bit of a Californian twist on it there. But without further ado, let's get stuck into this beer. This is the Anchor Saison Spring Beer from uh, Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco, California. Cheers. that's quite nice actually as you would expect from the style big bready blanket just goes right over the palate there they've got a nice balance actually in this between the the hops and the malt base I would say so as you would expect you've got a kind of nice sweet yeast there and that 
is quite in the middle of the tongue. It's not quite as sweet as the Belgian ones I would point out and the beer doesn't taste anywhere near as boozy as some of the Belgian ones but then again it is only 7.2% so usually a Belgian beer will go up into the 8 and 9s and things like that but it tastes very nice. Alcohol content isn't the most important thing of course. But yeah, the tongue its actually very very light the tongue is just blanketed with this kind of um, sweet, slightly sweet, bready, doughy flavour. And there's actually just a little bit of kind of wheaty and uh, a sort of peppery spice just mixing in with wheat there, I would say. And there is a perhaps just a teeny, teeny bit of kind of biscuity grain in this too. You do pick up just a little bit of caramel flavour in this. But you can really taste the lemon citrus, particularly when the liquid's on your tongue, you really get that kind of um, lemon grassy and lemony citrus feel out of this one so it's quite an interesting um, quirk that this beer has actually that they've made those little additions to it. It's actually a very nice twist. I always like the beers that they design like for example the one that springs to mind is the McKellar Dim Sum which was designed to be eaten with Asian food so I can see I would actually say that these lemon grassy characters that this beer had would perhaps make it quite good to, dr to drink when you're eating Asian food actually so just a little interesting thing but as I say you, the tongue gets blanketed, the middle of the palate is blanketed with this kind of soft lightly doughy bread flavour in there and there is a little bit of um, there is a kind of peppery and slightly clovey spice on top of that but there is a nice big presence of the wheat but the wheat's not overly prominent it just blends in very very well with the flavour and I would say that there is a little bit of kind of almost biscuity graininess a sort of slightly caramelly biscuit character to this one right in the middle of the palate. But around the edges of the mouth you're getting a big kind of grassy hop there and there is maybe just a teeny teeny little bit of acidy, uh, acidic fruit actually but it's more a kind of nice smooth lemon citrus but it's not a very sharp lemon citrus like I say it's all to do with the lemon grass and things that they've put in this beer so overall it's very nice it's actually a good balance between a big malt and a nice refreshing hop I would say Yeah, I would stick with that assessment. Very nice and very smooth with the hop character around the outside. When the liquid's on your, your tongue, you really can pick up the sort of lemongrass and lemon peel that they've put into this. And it, it's very nicely done. The flavours blend together very well. But what I would say is that in terms of being a sort of Belgian saison, it's quite different in the style of that. And, you know, you can debate about styles all day. It is different from a Belgian Saison, but it tastes very good, so really it depends on what you want. If you want a classic Belgian Saison, then maybe you should go for one from Belgium. But if you want one that's a very nice and very refreshing beer, then this guy's here. It's got a little bit of a kind of Californian quirk to it, as I say. But um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say it's quite mid-bodied. It's not quite light-bodied. It does have a a kind of bigger mouthfeel to it because of all the bready and yeasty character that's in there. The carbonation is actually quite smooth, it's just got a nice level of carbonation on it but it's got a slightly syrupy and oily mouthfeel to it as well. The, ca this, the citrusy characters are very smooth on it which is quite unusual. Usually in a Saison beer they can be quite acidic and the hops can be quite prominent but the hops aren't too dry either it's just got a nice very kind of small level of dryness so overall the flavours blend together very nicely so if you do want to try a nice kind of uh, unusual Saison I would say then give this guy a go it's very nice the flavours all blend together very well and I would actually say that this one could go quite well with some Asian food I would say like Thai food or something like this so it's a very nice beer and I would recommend that you give it a go quite different from the Belgian versions of of it as I say. But anyway, as is usual with my beer, uh, as um, as I would say, always say, I've kind of screwed it up a little bit there. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Please let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comments section below. And in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, and I hope to catch you soon with my next beer review. Slanja for now.